AM 96.3 FM, The Source. Four minutes before ten o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story. Ready? It's, okay. It goes like this: Once upon a time, there was a world where everything was beautiful, and then people decided they wanted to be able to move a little faster and to do things a little better and to make everything a little more comfortable. And so building and production and all that happened, and it was pretty good until the people started to realize that oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what we're doing is making this beautiful place not so beautiful anymore. We got to have to change our ways. But there were some people. Here's the here's the here's where the bad guy comes in. There were some people who didn't want that change because they actually made money from the things we were doing. And and the, and the, the people who wanted to keep everything beautiful. So well, wait a minute. They, we can keep things like this and do it the right way and then everything will be beautiful again. That's right. And they won. See? And that's why the world is beautiful today, kids. See, that'll be the that'll be a future story. Somebody will tell that story in 10, 10, 20 years. The people behind the movement to keep the planet clean are the heroes in this story, and one of them is on the phone. We've spoken to her before, and um, I just loved the message that she had. The book is uh, really doing well, by the way, on Amazon. It's called The Green Amendment. Uh, Maya K. Van Rossum is on the phone. You might remember the name. She is a Envir- an environmentalist, uh, the executive director of the Delaware Riverkeeper Network. She's also an attorney, by the way. Um, and uh, she's talking about protecting the environment and things we can do to uh, make that story a reality. Good morning, Maya. How are you? Good morning. I love that story. I hope you're going to write a children's book with that message. We should do this, Robin, a children's book. <laughs> do you, I don't know if I told you last time you were Robin and I actually have a, a song that we did years ago called Forest Green. You did, you did, and I was anxiously awaiting hearing that song today. Oh, were you? Um, (laughs) See, here's the problem with that. Let me just tell you the honest truth. Back in those days, we made everything on cassettes because we weren't famous or rich, so it's kind of really poor quality because I did listen to it. I'll have to figure out a way. I don't know. We'll have to get a young singer to do it now because we we don't sound good anymore. You know, we we got old. (laughs) Yeah, we'll have to get young kids to sing it. So how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you very much. And where are you? Um, currently, I am sitting in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, um, waiting to speak with all of you. How come you call it the Commonwealth and not the state? I, you know, that, that's, a, that's a different line of <laughs> knowledge that's not mine. Right. So let me, ask you, let me ask you this. If you, if you were to ask me, What's the most pristine place I've ever been to? In, in addition to right here in this part of Florida, we've got some beautiful places, but I would also think of Pennsylvania because I remember as a kid, we would vacation and camp there. Oh, my gosh, it was so beautiful. There, there are many beautiful places in Pennsylvania, um, but sadly they are quickly dwindling as you know industry rolls over so many of them. But there are still beautiful places, and the Upper Delaware River watershed is one of them. Uh, we had uh, visited some family in Arnett, Pennsylvania, and the people that were still living there were very angry because of the fracking that was going on. Oh, really? In that area. And, you know, people are angry, one, because the the industry is just running roughshod over them and very literally harming every aspect of their lives, from the water to the air to their ability to enjoy their own backyards on a, on a you know, beautiful, um, sunny day. But they're also angry because government officials in Pennsylvania are... Um, are leaving them in the lurch, right, and allowing industry mm. to do this. And so that's why in Pennsylvania we use the, the Green Amendment that, that was long ignored in the Pennsylvania's Constitution to hold the government officials to account and to hold industry to account. And, you know, we continue to work on that every single day. Well, the argument from the other side, and we've had guests from the other <laughs> side of this one, and the argument is that you drive a car, right? So you need you need the gasoline to put in your car. So we really need to be doing this. Otherwise, we become dependent on other nations. 
but I we knew we now have some new um, ammunition. And I, I know I drive a car, and I'm part of the problem too. But Disney World announced that before, like to, in the end of a year or so, they're very quickly going to put together enough solar cells to literally power two of their four theme parks. That's pretty amazing. We have we have responsible businesses like that all over the country doing doing the right thing. Um, and <clears throat> when it comes to driving a car, I drive a car. My car is an all-electric car. I have solar panels on my roof, and right now my car is plugged into my home, getting its charge. See so I that? Can drive to the I office love later. that. That's <laughs> awesome. So, in other words, yeah. the, the, and the other argument about electric cars is that when you power your car up, the electricity comes from a coal-burning plant somewhere. But in your case, it doesn't. And in Disney's case, that's, that was the other thing they said, is there are vehicles that they're on property vehicles will all be charged on that same uh, internal grid or whatever you call it. Yeah, and see, one of the problems is, right, we really do have the opportunity to, ha to have cars powered by clean energy. And, and in many places, it's actually happening. But um, one of the reasons, though, why people have to turn to dirty fossil fuels, whether it's for their car or for their homes, is because government officials continue to perpetuate a system that advances dirty fossil fuels, that tries to stymie clean energy or certainly not um, ensure that clean energy outpromotes dirty fossil fuels. And so very literally, in many circumstances, that clean energy option, that clean energy choice is not available to people. They want to make that choice, but because government continues to perpetuate the dirty fossil fuels, in some situations, it's just not available to them. And that's where we need the government to change their behavior, because the fact of the matter is, every single state in this nation could be supported by, totally supported by clean energy options by the year 2050 if government officials change the rules, change the regulations, and change their investments to make that our near-term future. Instead, they continue to double down on that dirty fossil fuel pathway. And that's why we continue to have this kind, you know, these growing problems when it comes to fossil fuels and climate change. Maya, if, if the marketplace dictates what succeeds and what fails, and if those people in charge of the marketplace influence our elected officials, then it, it just seems like it would make sense that some, somebody in, in the energy field, whether it's Exxon, Exxon or you know, one of the power companies, one of the, what am I trying to say, one of the energy companies, if they were to jump on board and do something similar to what Disney is doing, I think the average person would say, you know what, I'm going to start getting my power from them because they're not contributing to the problem. And then, and then the marketplace would, would dictate what the government, because usually the government is not the leader. Usually the government is the follower. Well, in many places where that choice is available, people do, do pick that um, mm. clean energy option. And in fact, when you look at energy growth, when you look at solar, when you look at wind, when you look at those clean energy options in terms of growth, the growth really is outpacing the dirty fossil fuel industry. But this is where government inter intervention is so crucial, because just left to yeah, their own devices, yeah, yeah. the marketplace would do it, but industry is giving... Uh, regula uh, government is giving the dirty fossil fuel industry a leg up in terms of regulations and investment and placing an additional burden on clean energy. For example, uh, you know, President Trump um, announcing new tariffs on the solar industry, right, to make it harder for solar to grow. And despite all of that, despite those impediments, the clean energy industry continues to excel and to succeed. That's how vibrant that industry is and how um, not just viable, but strong it will be. It's just going to take a longer time because government is, again, perpetuating the dirty fossil fuel industry because they get lobbying money from them and right, election right. money from yeah, them. Yeah, there's lobbying money. I, I did not realize that, uh, that President Trump uh, put a tariff on solar power. Yeah, he announced the tariff um, a, a few weeks back. So, you know, a Google search will... will so why? I mean, so what was the logic behind that? Uh, you know, what's I mean, the logic be behind all of the rollbacks, you know... But can you be the devil's advocate just for a moment? Can you tell me what they were saying? 
I truly can't. No. You know, it's 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 just such um, you know backwards thinking, and uh, you know they always make false claims about economy and and the like. It, none of it, when you look at the facts and the figures, none of it bears out. It really is just who's who's lobbying and who's giving more I, money. Yeah, I and hear you, and I, isn't that just a shame? I, I t- the, Trump comes from New York City, and New York has had this horrible. Uh, water, and I think we talked about this last time you were with us. The, in the Hudson and the East Rivers both have been horribly de- de- polluted forever, um, and and efforts by the local uh, what do you call them municipalities? I guess the local governments, the city and the counties, started doing things to change that and and fix it. And you know now. It's maybe not as pristine as the rivers that that are right around where we're talking from here, or perhaps in Pennsylvania, but it is a lot better. It's so it's so much better, in fact, that they now allow um, people to use kayaks and stuff in the, in the Hudson. So our environmental protection laws across the board, they absolutely have accomplished tremendous good in terms of pollution reduction and preventing illness and very literally saving lives and creating jobs. But but there's a ceiling on what they can and will do because our system of environmental laws, whether you're talking about Florida and New York or the U, you know the United States federal laws, are all focused on regulating, managing pollution and environmental degradation, how, when, and where it will happen. They're not really focused on prevention and, for example, advancing development or the energy in industry in a way that mandates pollution and environmental degradation avoidance. And that's why we have a ceiling on the level of benefit we can have. And there are still many of contaminants and toxins. You know, you can look at Chlorofluorinated compounds, which are a dangerous um, cancer-causing toxin now found in drinking water across the nation. If you look at the federal environmental, um, environmental laws, there is only a voluntary program to to stop their use. It's not a regulatory program, despite how dangerous we know these contaminants are and how many industries and how many um, elements of the government in Mm -hmm. in terms of the U.S. Army actually use them. You know, I I typically have uh, a resistance to legislation as a a problem-solving mechanism. Um, Typically, when I hear somebody proposing legislation, I will think, well, wait a minute, why do we have to have a law? Why can't we just have a campaign so that way the law isn't what's regulating us? It's it's, uh, like, for example, there's no law that says you can't smoke, but there's a lot of programs that say you shouldn't smoke, and it's, it's been very effective. In this case, however, I'm on your side. I really think legislation is necessary in some of these things. Um, but I, but I, but I think somebody like yourself is taking it the right way. I would hate to, to see somebody take it and go too far with it, if you, if that makes sense to you. So what what I'm really you know talking about is is more than legislation, and I think is just a fundamental moral um, good. Oh yeah recognizing that we all have an inalienable right to clean water, clean air, and a healthy environment, and recognizing it the same way we recognize the right to free speech Mm -hmm. in the Bill of Rights section of our Constitution. And from that filters down not just good lawmaking, but better decision-making, because every time a government official makes a decision, they have to, in their own minds, say, how can I make this decision in a way that protects the people's right to clean water, clean air, and a healthy environment? So fundamentally, you start to change it at the decision-making process as well, which is just key. Well, and that's why I said I'm in favor of this being legislation, because exactly what you said, that decisions that are made that are contrary to a, a an ethical decision to keep things clean um, for everybody, for everything, every living thing. Um, if you don't have a law stopping you, you might do it because of the money, because of somebody else's lobbying efforts and or lo- lobbying logic. A lot of times lo- lobbyists will make something seem logical and at the same time you know in your heart that it's going to hurt somebody. 
Yeah, and also lobbyists in industry and developers tend to be focused on that very short-term economic or job-creating goal, right? They're talking about the next five years and ju- making justifications right. for their shareholders right. Right. or pumping up their own salaries. But we're really talking about, you know, um, the long game, the oh, long yes. game in terms of the environment. But economically, the truth is every single pathway, whether you're talking about development or energy or industry, if you do it the right way, the way that protects the environment at the same time you advance your goal, economically, in terms of job creation, long-term um, sustainable jobs that, that properly support families, all the way around, you are better off doing it that environmentally protective Right, right, yeah. And uh, what your book does is you have examples in your book. I mean, people can't uh, dispute that. Yes, I work very hard. I have a whole chapter which really makes the case on how investment in in the right way, whether it's energy development or industry, is not just better for the environment, but it's better for jobs and better for people. Um, So, you know, I work very hard to dispel the myth and to uh, prevent people from being fooled by those false economic arguments. I think New York City, you mentioned New York. You know, New York is such a great example. New York City drinks unfiltered water from the upper reaches of the Delaware River watershed. And that's because the city invested up to $1.5 billion in protecting the natural systems that filter that water. And as a result, they didn't have to put in place a treatment plant that would have cost them as much as $20 billion, right? So when you do it the right way, sometimes you make more money, sometimes you save more money. Either way, you're better off. And the people of New York, um, of New York City, drink some of the best quality drinking water across the nation in terms of um, taste. It wins taste tests all, you know, like, uh, you know, um, yeah, taste tests yeah, no, I, all I, the time. I, I'm so, uh, <laughs> it's good for pizza. I know, I heard that too. <laughs> my, my AK, and bagels. My yes. AK Van Rossum is on, um, is our guest, and she's the author of the book, The Green Amendment. So is, uh, one thing before we, do, we get to, before we talk about the uh, amendment or anything legal, um, in Florida, we have had this debate about uh, drilling off the coast in the Gulf and off the coast in the Atlantic, and I guess it's fracking type of drilling. I'm not really sure about that, but the point is that if we can, if we can show, th- there was a there was a map I saw the other day, a map of Oklahoma or Tulsa, Oklahoma, or something, and it showed all the earthquakes that have happened in a place that never had earthquakes, and they're saying. It's because of the fracking going on there. In, in our area, as fragile as we are with all the sinkholes that can happen up, open up at any minute, my fear is that if we were to extract things from, the, from underground at, to the extent that it was going to cause that, I mean, whole towns could literally collapse. This, this peninsula used to be underwater, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't know. But, but, but I think if Disney can show by example how to do it, I, th- I mean, why not? Why not follow a leader? So I have to tell you, I was shocked. I was in Florida a couple weeks ago speaking about the book, um, two great events there, and um, I was shocked that I only saw solar panels once in the Sunshine State, and my, I was traveling all around um, and, you know, came to learn that, that Florida really does not, not only do, are they not trying to advance the clean energy options, but as far as I understand it, the government is really looking to stymie it um, in support of dirty, dirty fossil fuels. Which government? The um, state government or the, or the federal government? State. That's what, I'm um, just talking with advocates in the area that it's the state government. Um, and I think the proof is in the pudding. You can drive around Florida. I see more solar panels look at, you know, driving around Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. We're not in the Sunshine State than I saw in the state of New York in, you know, all the traveling that I did there, which was quite, quite shocking to me. Um, and so really, it really is about this energy choice. Are we going to advance that clean energy option or are we going to perpetuate dirty fossil fuels, whether it's uh, whether it's causing earthquakes or causing pollution of the air or climate changing emissions that are going to devastate yeah, yeah. future so, generations, so w- it's wrong. One thing we have in Florida a lot of is swimming pools, and I, I can tell you how for forty dollars to make a, a, a swimming pool heater, and it's all solar. Are you ready? 
you, you take the pump and you attach it to a garden hose. And then you put the garden hose on the the overhang somewhere on the roof or someplace out in the sun. Oh, for if it's if, if the pools are enclosed. R- well, no, with the screen. No, you can put it up on oh, your okay. own roof or out in the grass or someplace. Oh, but okay. the point is that the the hose has to be in the sunlight. And if it snakes around a long time, by the time the water comes out, it'll be warm. Oh. And it fills the pool with warmer warmer water than you normally would have. You know how I know this? My brother Bill. Oh, that's My brother right. built one uh, on for, for his own pool. That's how he that's how he warms his pool. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. He made his own solar heater. Mm-hmm. Smart, cheap, and efficient. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and it has nothing to do with technology. It's just common sense. The hose out in the sun heats up the water. Mm-hmm. Sim- simple as that. <laughs> so, will we be seeing the Green Amendment on ballots? I know we've got an election coming up here in Florida. So there, there are organizations in the state of Florida that are really interested in the concept. Um, we, there, there's not a, an initiative happening yet, but I think people are getting excited about the idea and, and are looking to mobilize around it. Um, but, but before it would get onto the ballot, there's, you know, there's a lot of work that has to be done, and of course the politicians are going to have to weigh in. So I think, you know, one way that it can and should be rearing its head in in the state of Florida, not only hopefully through some good advocacy, but everybody should be asking every single political candidate if we had the right to clean water, clean air, and a healthy environment proposed for the Bill of Rights section of our Constitution, would you support it? Why or why not? Yeah, why or why not? That's a good, good question. And, uh, too, you know, the, the, the companies that are in using fossil fuels, like the gasoline companies and things, you know, they should have had this vision years ago that they could be doing a lateral move right now and still be making the same amount of money. Can I, can I argue with that? And, and maybe, Maya, you can argue my argument because I'm not as smart as you on this. But my argument would be, and I'm, I'm anxious to hear what you're going to say, is that years ago it was cost prohibitive to do solar. Now it's a little easier. Am I right? So, you know, now it is definitely um, getting easier and easier and more and more cost effective. But that's not to say that it wasn't cost effective, you know, in the past. Mm. Really, what we've had in the history of the energy industry is government giving the fossil fuel industry a leg up, whether it was through investments or regulations or easy decision making. Right. And had that had years ago, that kind of energy and investment been placed in the clean energy options, we would be far far more ahead today um, than we are. Now, what the, what the dirty fossil fuel industry will say to you is that, you know, they'll perpetuate the false um, arguments of, you know, the political campaigns. We need an all-the-above strategy. We need to continue to grow dirty fossil fuels and clean energy at the same time. And that's simply not true. That, true. That's just absolutely false. Whatever we have in terms of dirty fossil fuels, you know, use it till it runs out. But we need to be investing solely in those clean energy options. The dirty fossil fuels are not a bridge to the future. They are a bridge to more devastation. We need need to be shutting those taps off and turning the sun and wind energy sources on. Uh, Maya, thank you for the work you do, and thank you for taking time to be with us to understand this better. Uh, the book is called The Green Amendment. Um, how do we get to I found it on Amazon. Do you have a website you want to direct us to? If you go to mayavanrossum.green or forthegenerations.org, you can either learn about the book or about the initiative of getting green amendments in every state um, and get more information and facts up at those two sites. Maya, thank you for coming back on with us. It was, uh, it was a very um, engaging conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Have you, a great day. Thank you. You too. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio, I'm Chris Foster. There's a group of Central Americans at the U.S.-Mexico border asking to come in. Nearly 200 migrants, including children, were part of a caravan who went to the U.S. border on Sunday asking for asylum, only to be told the San Diego crossing was already full. They left their home countries more than a month ago, making the trip by foot, freight train, and bus. President Trump and some cabinet members called the caravan a threat to the U.S. Fox's Tanya J. Powers. At least 25 people, including nine journalists, are reported killed in a double suicide bombing in Kabul, 
Afghanistan. Fox's Lucas Tomlinson reports. The second suicide bomber disguised himself as a journalist and detonated his bomb after reporters had arrived on scene. There was a suicide bombing later in southern Afghanistan. Several Afghan police and civilians, including a group of children, were killed. Eight Romanian troops, part of the NATO mission in Afghanistan, were wounded in that attack. Fox News, we report, you decide. Pros in the know start with Lowe's because Lowe's saves pros money every day. Get up to 20% off select concrete and masonry mixes when you buy in bulk. Plus, save 5% on every purchase every day when you use your Lowe's.